So we say that in the deep learning concept of uh, multilayer perceptron, the critical nonlinear element was the thresholding unit, which said that you know if something is less than zero, it is uh, minus one. If something is greater than zero, it is one. So this is what is giving the nonlinear behavior for the corresponding you know logic. Though we actually got input from multiple inputs. Ultimately, the nonlinear behavior was because of the thresholding unit. So we find that the power of, you know, multilayer perceptron actually comes from its power of being able to handle nonlinearity, as we saw in the case of SOR function. It extends the power of linear separability by handling complex functions which are not necessarily linearly separable. So what happens is, the way the functions work in context of the input being transformed to output is usually the presence of a certain kind of what is known as activation function. Activation function is a crucial method, crucial element of any neuron where Though there are several input nodes coming in with weights and their summation is always used along with bias, but the radical transformation in terms of the output of the neuron is dictated by the corresponding activation function. So activation function is what basically determines what the output of such a neuron will be. Like in this case it's 1 or minus 1 depending upon threshold being passing one boundary or not. So what are the different activation functions which are used in the context of deep learning? So typically deep learning will use different kinds of activation functions, but the most common activation functions which are used are what is known as, you know, basically ReLU, which is a very simple form of a nonlinear transformation where it performs a very simple function. It says that if, if z is less than 0, if it is less than 0, then we may output 0. If z is greater than or equal to 0, output z. So, ReLU of z, right? If this is z, it is plotted like this. It is 0 to here and it becomes y to x kind of a thing after the 0 equation. So this is a very powerful nonlinear transformation function or activation function which is used for main categories of neural networks like convolutional neural networks etc. The other more common function is what we have seen in logistic regression where we talk about something known as sigmoid function. Sigmoid x is same as what we call as 1 by 1 plus t to the power of minus x. So the advantage of this is that this flows only between 0 and 1. So if you see sigmoid of x is nothing but 1 by 1 plus t to the power of minus x. Sigmoid x is one very popular activation function which is used in the context of you know, neural networks. So what it does is it takes the output and puts it to, compresses it to a value between 0 and 1. So in order for us to avoid the you know, bias towards only positive values, an alternative has appeared which is uh, called tan hyperbolic x which is related to sigma in some sense but it is a slight variant which allows us to create a boundary from minus 1 to plus 1. So if you see it is basically creating you know two extremes between minus 1 and 1, unlike between 0 and 1 for this case. So tan hyperbolic x basically takes 
x and transforms it into a variable between 0 at one x, minus 1 at one extreme and 1 at the other extreme. So if you see tan hyperbolic x is basically written as e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus e to the power of minus x by e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x. So this is basically an example where it can vary from say minus 1 at extreme minus infinity level to plus 1 for plus infinity level. So you can see that here. Suppose x is minus infinity. So this will become 0 and this becomes uh, you know plus infinity which is minus e to the power of plus infinity and by e to the power of plus infinity which is basically minus 1. So it goes to minus 1. On the other hand if x is very high this becomes e to the power of infinity and this becomes you know, 0 and this becomes e to the power of infinity e to the power of infinity becomes close to 1. So what happens is this oscillates between 1 and minus 1 and is usually considered a better activation function than the classical sigmoid function which is one way in terms of only positive. The other very simple version of uh, transformation function which is used is the standard y equal to x which is called a linear activation function. So in that sense the more popular versions of activation function which are responsible for the transformation of the output after you compute sigma of w x i plus b which are inputs to each node in the neuron in deep learning are the activation functions. It can be either in form of a linear function y equal to x or it can be in form of ReLU which is basically saying that in 0 it is 0 otherwise it goes to the as of linear or it can be sigmoid which is saying that it is 1 by 1 plus 0 plus x or it can be a tan hyperbolic which says that it is e to the power of x minus 0 minus x by e to the power x plus e to the power of minus x which is basically varying between minus 1 and 1 and it is these activation functions which are the secret source of the generalizability of the different you know functions from neural network perspective and they play a very important role.